What is going on guys? It is your boy Sisso here, present a video here today, bringing you guys a Photoshop tutorial how to create your own very cool, I really don't have any idea what we're going to be calling this today, however, uh, I called it Thin Lines for now, maybe we'll put like lines somewhere in there, but uh, I kind of wanted to run away with like this really dope, just like when you zoom in you can kind of just see the, the texture, the complexity, the, um, I don't know, the finesse, if I would say. Uh, it looks super super nice i would kind of call it, i would kind of put in the realm of simplistic and whatnot because it's actually not too hard it's only we're really only working on one thing which happens to be this right here um this is like the main setup of how everything's gonna be going right so you're gonna be basically making one like this and i uh, sort of just duplicating over just to make yourself a really nice looking cool kind of whatever we're gonna call it you know what i mean so hope you guys are today's tour here today as always, guys, 200 likes on the video equals a secret down below, which will mostly be the PSD of this video, which will be all this kind of stuff here, all that's locked in, all that cool stuff that you guys get to, you know, create and whatever. Um, but yeah, you can just see how it's just super beautiful. I'm not going to lie to you. I did put multiple colors. This this gradient here is just like an orange to a uh, reddish kind of tone. This one right here is just a simple little blue to a nice darker blue. And you're going to see how all this is formulated. It's really, really dope. And I'm sure a lot of you guys will take this and kind of mix, mix and twist it into something that could be just your kind of style. Um, Till then, homies, don't forget to leave a like, like I said before. Let's go ahead and just jump right into this video right now. All right, guys. So let's go ahead and get this thing started. And yes, uh, you're not tripping. My uh, I had to turn my light because it got a little dark in here um anyway so i'm gonna get this thing going today so pretty much all i'm gonna do is basically like really just hold um not hold or uh kind of hide hon hold hound hound in to this little uh, little shape right here so pretty much all we're pretty much working on is i'm just gonna take a duplicate of this really quick uh is this shape right here there we go right so we're just gonna work, basically work on one is because i just did this that's two uh working on one as because we're just gonna basically make a duplicate of it over and over and over again just like i think two or three times that way to kind of fill this left hand side and then just give ourselves a little bit of a complex sort of look to it which is just basically one of those i guess you can call it simplistic if you guys wish to like working on one thing and then kind of making that one thing be the entire uh banner design but uh realistically i don't know what we're gonna call it yet we're just gonna call it somewhat lines and uh, let's go and get this thing going so uh, pretty much trying to break this thing down for you guys really quickly is using our brush right here right so this little shape right here this is one this is one rectangle this is the rectangle with the inner shadow on that's gonna be doing first and then secondly there's another rectangle right here which happens to be our little gradient sort of blue that's going on here and there's another rectangle right here oops that's a crap little uh, outline but there's another rectangle on this out uh, outer side to kind of hold this really nice gradient that kind of gives it like this gradient right here nice little metal texture to it and uh, lastly, of course, you have these little stroke things here, and then you have a little pattern, uh, just a little bit of a, I guess, a com just complexity kind of thing. That way, when you actually do duplicate it over, you have something that you can actually sort of like have on the opposite side by flipping it over. Um, but yeah, it's not too hard whatsoever. I'm going to delete this. We're gonna, we can keep that, I guess. We're just going to call it uh, handy, just in case, right? We're going to look at it or whatnot. Now, hide that, though. And we're going to get this thing going. Actually, I'm going to keep this on for a second because I want to make sure I get the, at least the same around the same size uh, rectangle. So pretty much the first thing we're going to be doing is using the rectangle tool. Okay. So once you select that rectangle tool, we're going to simply just on the off side of the canvas. The reason why I'm starting on the kind of the top of the canvas, right? And I'm going to drag down pretty far just around here. <clears throat> I'll say the thickness. So if you look at the, on the bottom right, right where my cursor is, like right at the right of the cursor, you can see what my like width and height is. If you guys wish to kind of copy that. And just so you guys know if the reference, I am in a uh, 1000, excuse me, 3000 by 1000 document size with 300 PPI. That is a Twitter header dimension. If you guys wish to know, I think my phone just turned off. Okay. Um, so yeah, once you have that good, you can just basically, basically press control T on your keyboard to free transform it and then rotate it. I want to make sure I kind of have it around the same angle. So if you see how if it's not too high enough or it's not high enough or whatnot, you have to probably like just take this because you want to make sure that this line here doesn't stop. You want to make sure it goes off the canvas gonna move it over toward the left and I would say around a little smaller so just like around there cool I'm gonna press enter now and I'm gonna take off this handy thing because we don't need it anymore so the reason why I use the rectangle by the way is so I can do that just like so because it with a pen tool it's not perfect and if you did it with a marquee tool it'd be a little bit difficult to uh, kind of like I guess fill it afterwards and like move it if you guys needed to so basically the reason why I did this like I just said press uh, rectangle tool Take the stroke here, turn it off by clicking this little box with a red slash through it. it. means no color, so that yellow will go away. And we're going to take our fill color, we're going to click on that thumbnail, and we're just going to select any color for right now because it doesn't matter, right? So just, just so you guys know, if you guys wanted to, if you guys needed to go back, please make a duplicate of this one here, just in case you ever don't like the rectangle size or whatnot. However, I'm going to not because I am just I already know this is pretty much how I'm going to go ahead and go for it. So I'm going to go ahead and rasterize this layer. Before I do that, though, I'm going to double click on this, take the color overlay, 
right? I'm gonna select the same exact code that I have on the left hand side. So for this this hex code is uh 1417C. I don't know why I just like hiccup there. Uh 14171C, right? This is a little sort of like a grayish tone, almost like the nice little grayish blue tone here. Press OK press OK again. So yes, I do have sort of like a separation right here, right? We have uh, for the background color, this happens to be hex code 0D1015. So if you guys want to kind of copy this thing, that code that I have going on here, you guys can go ahead and definitely do so. But I did kind of have this little layer right here split in half just so I can have like something to kind of hold the background to and then have a little bit of a contrast to. So this little shape here was just basically done by using the pen tool, you know, going around, you know, well, I guess I can get it as close as possible, right? <clears throat> don't even know why I'm struggling on that part there Jesus right kind of like just just something like that went around just like so filled it in and I filled it in with that color on the left hand side so uh, now we have that over the way we're gonna take this put this back over there please and thank you I'm gonna have it where I had it right now I'm gonna rash this layer being is because I want to make sure the color overlay is no longer there because usually when a color overlay when you want to do any other layer styles color overlay happens to be that layer uh, style effect that uh, go, I guess is above everything else so everything else kind of doesn't work sometimes so rasterize layer style and just you can see where it is I'm gonna just make my lightness uh, 26 you can see exactly where it is right but it's the same as that color so you can't see it just yet but what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your fill you're gonna take your fill and lower this down to zero we're gonna call this inner shadow layer so we can follow inner shadow layer so zero on that inner shadow layer double click on this we're gonna go ahead and go to our uh, inner shadow right now and ooh, it's already perfect way I had it. Okay, cool. So your layer style is uh, multiply for your blend mode, opacity at 90%, my angle's at 120. That's basically the reason being is because I wanted to have on the same angle that we kind of have going on for the actual rectangle. Uh, the distance at zero, choke on zero, size is on 55. Press okay and you're good to go there. Now, before you do anything again, make a duplicate of this layer right here, the inner shadow layer, make a duplicate of it by doing control J on your keyboard and or hold alt and shift and select the layer and move it over just like so. You can do that. I like to do that as well because I want to move it off the canvas for a second because I'm going to show you guys what we're going to do. So I'm going to take this inner shadow layer, take that off, right? Just by clicking that little eye. We're going to take our fill layer, put this back up to 100%. And the reason why we're doing this is we're going to take uh, control, set the thumbnail of the inner shadow layer copy right it's gonna give you the marquee tool selection if you press m on your keyboard or just simply just you know go to the rectangle marquee tool uh while you're doing this if you hold uh simply if you just click you can actually select and move this little marquee tool selection now so you just move it over toward the left and i would say <clears throat> a little more than halfway so like this i would say this is around halfway right just move it a little more toward the left so you can have a little just a little bit more space okay and once you've done that you can just press delete on your keyboard and that'll make a delete selection of it and you're good to go so the reason why i did that is i want to move it back in here i want it to kind of fit kind of flush um let's just uh move it more to the left see where that is now I'm just making sure it's somewhere okay perfect right so now it's there I can go ahead and just have this layer here being just like so right oh I moved it dang it whatever put it there <laughs> doesn't really matter too much we're gonna double click on this layer the inner shadow layer copy we're gonna double click on it go to gradient overlay and for this gradient we're gonna actually choose this blue right here and uh, I already have all my things sets just because I already had a, uh, a different version of the tutorial um, anyway this gradient here this blue is hex code 0b 07a seven zero b seven zero a seven dyslexia i think um right i'm gonna press cancel because i already have that blue here and i'm just gonna so for the middle part here for this blue we're gonna have hex code two a d two four a that's an f there is dyslexia is that a thing is it, that might be a thing yikes uh and this last one for the shadow here is hex code one four one seven one c so i'm gonna press okay where you're gonna have that gradient here is gonna give you like a really nice sort of like a kind of like a bezel kind of gradient kind of think of it as a layer like a cake that's kind of how we had a, the the uh, colors set up so press ok so make sure your blend mode is on normal opacity is on 100 I do have it reversed uh, I guess you guys would want to do that too so you can have the same colors and where the spots are right otherwise you just you know I guess you know go from uh, black right here to this blue on this side kind of thing right but reversing it, it's just as simple right take your angle and I'm gonna mess around my angle for a second just so you can see what I did so for you you might have your angle usually on default 90 or whatnot but all you're gonna have to basically do is uh, just think of it like right now you can't really see it with the uh, the full-on if this is a full-on layer this great and be like lined right here but we want to make sure it's aligned flush to this angle right here so I'm gonna take my angle and I'm gonna click on it I'm gonna just use my scroll wheel and I'm just gonna move up right just until I get to the place I already saw it before but as you guys know I'm just gonna just kind of go through it with you guys again 
right? Just so we're about, it looks like it's about flush to this angle right here. Now for you, however, I'm gonna reset the alignment. You might have it look something like this. What I basically did was I just selected on the actual gradient overlay and then moved it over toward the left a little bit, or excuse me, the right a little bit, so I can have this little uh, section here where it's almost faded out, be shown. So that's all I pretty much did. Also make sure your scale is at 10%, normally you're gonna have it at 100%, and that's not what we kind of want right now. We don't want a sign of like a smooth transition. We want a very harsh transition. So make sure this is on 10% by just deleting one letter, uh, one number zero right there, right? So I can now press okay and we're good to go over there. So now what I'm gonna do is a little sort of like little, uh, I guess metal texture, um, little rectangles on the left and right hand side. So I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a new layer. We're gonna select just around or outside the canvas. I'm gonna kind of make sure my pen tool here is kind of gonna line right on this line right here. So I'm gonna go and zoom in for a second, hold control on the point, move it on that line there, and make sure I go to the top and do the same exact thing. It's not, so I'm gonna move it over to the right just a little bit more. Okay, cool. Now on this bottom hand side here, I'm gonna simply just hold shift, make a straight line going over. Now, whatever thickness or thinness that you go for, you can really just do whatever the heck you guys want to. This is like a little bit of a guessing part. If you wanna do the same exact, the same exact thing that we did for the rectangle on the, uh, the the first indention one, then you can do so. We're gonna make this gradient now, gradient layer, right? Right, so uh, what's this layer? This is nothing in here right now, cool. So I'm gonna go up and kinda of guess like the same exact width kind of connect that right so you can have like a whistle like this i guess would work right just because eyeball it if you guys want to move this in a little bit maybe right just kind of eyeballing it right now you definitely don't want to have it you kind of want to have it like this size right here basically half of where the gradient bezel is and i would say this is pretty good i'm just using my arrow keys and moving it over to the right and i'd say that's pretty close now for me however i didn't do this before but i think this will look super super good if you went from a thickness to a thinner sort of like little ratio here i think that would look super super badass kind of a little i guess a little uh variation that you guys can try and go for yourself uh to make it super different than what i have here but it, it would work the same way just so you guys know okay so on this new layer here i'm going to fill this in with any color it doesn't really matter whatsoever so blue is going to be perfectly fine because we change this color with a gradient and we're going to just do that right now so we're going to double click on this layer nine we're going to call this left sidebar okay double click on this and i'm going to go ahead and just go into my gradient overlay make sure your bundles on normal right for this gradient here, I had a sort of same color of this left hand side here to a nice, uh, I guess a nice sort of grayish tone, a little bit lighter, I guess you would say, but it's got a grayish bluish tone. So basically on this left hand side here, I have the hex code 14171C, which is the same exact color as this color right here. I'm selecting it with a color eyedropper, it's not moving. I select other colors, it would move, right? So same exact color on the left hand side, whatever color you have on the left hand side, make sure that's the same color here, right? And then for the right hand side, we're gonna go for a hex code, where is it, please? Click. uh 353943 three. press ok press ok again and now I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my angle I'm just gonna angle this to where I have you know black on this top side here which is basically not black I guess the same color as the left hand side on the top side so it goes into a nice grayish tone here but don't forget that your scale is still on 10 add that zero in there for the hundred percent so it's a nice smoother transition so you're gonna have something like this right so I'm gonna say my angle looks pretty good around 118. So you can see how it kind of like flushes into this color here and then it goes into this nice color here. Um, if I wanted to, I would even say lower your your scale down to like almost 80, right? So it could be a little more, uh, I guess, uh, more blackish to kind of blend into. And I think it's pretty good. Cool, so I'm gonna press okay on this. And then now all I'm gonna do is, this is a little pen tool marking here, delete that. Right, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this left side bar and then just literally hold Alt and Shift. The reason why I'm holding Alt is to make a duplicate, just like so. And the reason why I hold Shift, because when I move left and right, it's the only axis that it'll actually go, right? So I can just kind of move it right until we hit this line right here, right? Boom, perfect. So, now we have that. And also don't forget, go back into this. So this is now the right sidebar. Okay, we're gonna go back into this gradient overlay and we're gonna take this angle and move it basically opposite, just move it opposite just like so right so this is like negative 51 be like somewhere close uh but i can just kind of like do exactly what it was if i just take the same number here so just 58 okay i tried negative 58 <laughs> negative 58 is probably right about the same exact exact axis um as the the what was it 248 or whatever 148 that was over there um 118 or whatever right so that's pretty much it's just opposite right press okay and now we're good to go there now i did do one other thing and I can kind of see this gradient 
bar right here needs to move over just a little bit to the middle okay cool now if you look over here on the handy part here and move this over to the left you can see this little line right here now this line right here is just some i kind of i, I kind of think of it as like a sharpen um but it really is just a basically a stroke on a white overlay and that kind of gives it a little more of like a like a metal texture right kind of like a little bit of shine so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna go ahead and take my uh inner shadow layer okay i'm gonna take this layer i'm gonna drag it above everything we're gonna take our fill, put it back to 100, no, excuse me, zero, but take our inner shadow and turn it off. Double click on this to go back into this, and we're gonna go put on a stroke, and we're gonna say stroke size, I guess three would have to work for this. Okay, I guess two, three, I guess two is the one I had personally, so we're gonna put it on two, right? You can see that little line right there, right? But what we're gonna do is we're gonna make sure that we rash dry this layer, that way we can erase it, because if we try to erase it right now, it would be a little bit awkward. See what happens there? So what we're gonna have to do is rasterize this layer. Once we have that strokes layer, it's still there, right? Yep, you can see it right there, right? Rasterize this layer just like so. And what we're gonna do is I'm gonna change our blend mode from normal to overlay. And we're gonna take our eraser now, and we're just gonna erase like right here, kind of have this little little shine right there. We're gonna keep that there. We're gonna erase that here. We're gonna erase it around here. So you have this nice little simple shine that you'll see. Um, nice little flush little shine, right? It looks really good. So we're gonna use this is our we're gonna call this our shine layer. Cool. All right, sweet. Uh, dude, my head my head is like so shiny. It's cause like I'm sunburn, I think. That sucks. It's so shiny. Um. Anyway, last but not least, I guess not last but not least, but one other thing as well that we did was we went with a pen tool. We're gonna go right around with the middle. You see where like this little section here was the blue ends and like the blue, uh where like this left hand side starts. Go right in between that. And we're gonna make a nice little line going through in the middle and we're gonna make another line right here oops we're gonna press control and click off of it so i can make another separate one so that kind of cancels what's going on over here if I, if I click again it'll cancel it right as you can see if i holding control select the off the canvas it's like in the middle here and select in the middle down here perfect now what i'm gonna do is i'm going to go ahead and switch my brush settings make sure your brush settings are on two size and 100 hardness right i'm gonna take my pen tool now right click show path drop down use your brush so it's going to take your brush settings and apply that to the stroke so press ok i can just delete the path now and you can't see it because it's actually a different color i'm going to change this color really quickly to a white so you can see nice perfect so if you guys want to do beforehand when you change your brush settings you can change your foreground color to white as well to change it um so yeah now you have this so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to go ahead and rasterize this layer style because i want to color overlay there i'm going to take my eraser and with a soft brush eraser get rid of the edges here so it like almost looks like a flare basically now Cool. Now I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change the color of one of the ones on the bottom right here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select on this layer. We're gonna call this uh, the stroke. No, we're gonna call this the flare layer. Flare layer. Okay. Right. Press M on our keyboard with the rectangle marquee tool. It's gonna give us the option to basically hover and select over that right hand side on the same exact layer, the flare layer. Right click and layer via cut. So what I'm gonna do this is gonna be flare layer two. Okay. So this one right here. We're gonna change this color color overlay to a blue. So we have a white and a blue, nice little contrast stuff going on here. And I press OK, press OK again. And that looks pretty good. So now, last but not least, would be the actual pattern part here. So what we're going to do here is make another new layer. And we're going to simply come in here. And we're going to take like the middle of this. So I'm going to say, give myself a little bit of space. Oops, let's click. Make sure we click. Give myself a little bit of space. I would say right around. I'm going to drag it pretty far down here. Right? I'm going to give myself a little bit of angle here. And for this part right here, I'll make sure I give myself kind of, we're just guessing the spacing here and to around there. Okay, cool. So now I'm going to do, I can kind of move this a little further down to make it a little more longer. Cool. Now I'm going to select, uh, right click, fill path, drop down any color whatsoever. It doesn't matter because I'm going to be doing it in a second it is lowering down our fill all the way down to zero here. And we're going to take this, I guess the color does matter in a second. So I'm going to do, besides actually filling in with any color, we're going to fill this color in with the same color as the background right here. Okay, press OK, press OK again. So right, does that, right? So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take my fill, lower this down to about 20%. Then we're going to double click on this layer. This is the pattern layer. We're going to double click on this layer to activate the layer style modes. And we're going to go to uh, inner, nope. Pattern overlay. So if you guys don't have these patterns, uh, it's a pattern pack that I have for three dollars on Selfy, Selfy.com slash Seso HQ S E L L F Y. If you guys don't know how to spell Selfy, um, basically I'm gonna take my patterns here. I'm gonna find a nice little pattern. You guys can pick all these little cool little patterns here. If you guys don't want to choose these, there's I guess you can use like a pattern pack that's probably free, or you can just use a texture and put it on overlay. Um, but I like to use these because it just kind of like holds a little more value to me. Um, in the sense of like a little more cleanliness, I guess you would say. Right, so I'm gonna take my scale, I'm gonna make sure all this is okay. I'm gonna press okay there. 
And then because our pattern pack is actually a little more of a bluish tone rather than a black, what I'm gonna have to do is we're gonna call this pattern layer one so you guys don't get confused. We're gonna make a duplicate of this, right? So we're gonna call this now pattern layer two. So what's gonna happen here is I'm gonna take the pattern overlay that's here and get rid of this. The reason why is because this one has fill at 20%. So take this, the first one, lower the, uh, basically turn off the pattern overlay. Take the second one here, take the fill, drop this down to zero. That way there's no no longer kind of like an overlapping fill options. And right here on the pattern overlay, I can rasterize this now because that the fill is at zero. Only thing that's available on this layer on the second duplicate is the actual pattern. So I can rasterize it now. I'm gonna press Control U, lower the lightness all the way down to negative 100. That'll make it black. As you can see, it's blue right now. Now it's black. That's doing what the lightness on zero is. But also, the reason why I showed you guys this is because you can go ahead and now and double click on this, use color overlay, and you can change the color of the actual pattern. Um, I guess patterns that you wanted to probably use to a different color if you guys ever wanted to, right? And or you can make a new layer like I used to do before. And then I guess clip mask that layer onto this pattern layer right here. You can take a nice little blue brush if you guys wanted to. And you can do something like that, right? If you guys want to do that too, that's also really cool. But I want to show you guys that that way that's an option for you guys, right? So you're going to have one layer that actually is just a layer like housing it. And this layer here is actually what's being in there, right? So it's pretty cool. So now that I have that pretty much done there, I might change this to a nicer, I guess, uh, darker kind of kind of matches at least. Now nah, I want pure black. We don't have any pure black in this entire thing. So I make it a little more darker blue, like something like that. Hex code 05067, okay? Just like so. Now we have that done there. We can go ahead and add a little simple little thing here. What I did right here, right? I just made a little simple little, uh, little I guess you would say a little accent. So I'm going to make a new layer. This is the last thing on this little part here. Click here. Click at the end of there. We're gonna give ourselves a nice little kind of follow this angle here, kind of follow this angle here. I would say that's pretty accurate. We'll just say that's accurate for now. On this new layer, fill this path in for a blue, just like so, whatever color that you guys are using. And it looks pretty good, just like so. Cool, now this is our little accent layer. And the reason why I named it for you guys, if once you guys hit 200 likes, of course, so make sure you guys leave a like. If you guys are in the video right now and you're still watching, make sure you guys leave a like on the video so you can get the PSD, all these little layers that are easier for you guys to follow. And uh, cool. So I can take all this stuff here. We're going to group this together. We're going to call this shape one. Okay. All the stuff is now grouped inside. And the way I did that, by the way, all I did was select the accent layer, hold shift, select the inner shadow layer, and then press control G to group it all together. Okay. So this is shape one. So all this, all I did for this part here, this is pretty much the quick little easy part to do, is hold Alt and Shift, make a duplicate, move it over toward the left. We're gonna give ourselves a pretty okay spacing between here, right? I took my uh, layer here, the little gradient layer on the inside. By the way, if you guys don't know this trick, if you hold Control and you select, it selects any layer you can see over here. Pattern one is selected. I want to select this shape here. I can, sh uh, you can see the accent layer is now selected. This little gradient bar is now selected. You can actually select any shape by holding control and having your movement tool selected, the V in your keyboard, right? You can do any of that, even this one over here. You can open this up and get anything. Just so you guys know, a simple little thing. So if you ever see me just quickly go back to the gradient layer and move it and whatnot, it's because I'm using control. Um, so gradient layer, turn that off, okay? So once you have this turned off now, we're gonna make another duplicate. Um, basically this is shape two, so we don't get lost, shape two. We're gonna go back to shape one and make a duplicate of that, and this is gonna be now shape three, okay? Okay, okay, this is shape three now. Take this one, we're gonna move this down over here. And I'm realizing personally that I wanna move everything over a little bit. <clears throat> to about here, right? I'm gonna take this, make sure I do that right, okay? Cool. I just kind of move, I just made the shape a little bit more bigger and move everything toward the right, you guys probably saw, right? So I'm gonna do for here, I'm gonna go ahead and control click and make sure I select this gradient here. And on this gradient, we're gonna change this gradient color to the nice orangey red that we had. And I believe it was this one, right? So this uh, orange here, the hex code is FF3D3D, press okay. That's kind of like a red as well. Uh, orange here for this on the right hand side is FFA656, press okay. So you can have this right here. Now the way I made this look, I guess a little more complex or a little more different, um, rather than just duplicating shapes, uh, what I want to do here is for shape number two, I forgot to do this, shape number two, this shape right here, you see how all these are lined up? I don't want to be lined up, I want to kind of have like a nice stair, kind of like um, ratio, I guess you would say. So I'm going to press Control T to free transform this one. I'm going to right click, flip it horizontal, right click, flip it vertical. That way this is now on the bottom. <clears throat> you can see this is not lined up here, so make sure you guys drag this back down to the bottom of the canvas. And on the top here, I'm going to use my arrow keys. I'm using, I'm going 
left, up, left, up is what I just did just now. And this side should be flushed as well, and it's not. So I'm just gonna take this and then move it down. And that should work perfectly. See, now that I, this is like top, bottom, top. So kind of have like a nice up and down ratio now. So now I wanna do is I wanna take shape number two. We're gonna make a duplicate of that by holding Alt on the group and dragging it above three. It's very simple to do that as well. So this is now shape number four, and this is our last layer actually. We're gonna take this, move this over, drag this over, excuse me. All right? I'm gonna drag this right in front. So you can see what I'm doing here. I'm gonna take, I'm lining this line here with this line right here, kind of. All right, something around there. And the reason why I did that, let's move this down as well. Move this a little further up. Let's use our arrow key so we're not actually moving it too far. Perfect. See how it's flush on the bottom and the top? Perfect. So I'm, I literally just line this line up right here with this line right here. So just line that up. That way this is kind of like split in half in a way. And it's no, it kind of looks like different, right? It just looks a little, bit, it's a little bit different. So now what you can do is if you guys want, you can take shape number one and make it duplicate again if you guys want to. You don't have to, but if you wanted to have like a nice blue, uh, orange blue, or all of them blue, you guys can have all of them blue. It doesn't really matter, but uh, I guess five shapes is all that you would have. And that's all I pretty much did for that left-hand side, right? So last but not least, we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to take this layer here. You see this bottom layer that we did in the, in the far beginning, right? This layer that's kind of splitting the kind of contrast. We're going to take our pen tool. And we're going to go behind this little uh, shape right here, right? We're going behind this shape, um, like mentally, right? So we're going to take our pen tool, go behind the shape, right? I'm going to go around this shape right here, okay? I'm going to make a, dupe, a copy of it. So I'm going to make a selection just like so. Make sure you select it on this layer. And we're going to take M on our keyboard to give us the option when we right-click right to layer via copy, right? So now I have basically a copy of this little right-hand side right here, which I want. And the reason why I want that is because we're going to make this blue to give this like a nice little cool little flare or if you want to you can make it orange as well i um, to make to kind of keep going with this little, little uh, i guess like little pattern or whatever but i'm just gonna make it blue because that's what i had before and then now what i can do is i'm gonna take this layer here hold alt drag this while you're holding alt you can drag it to make a du duplicate right below it right so now i can just move this over towards the right and this is what i did before right as you can see what's going on here right move it what i did before for when i did the word thin lines if anyone can uh, say in the comment section why I did thin lines, uh, song reference, who, who knows? It's like an older song, I guess you would say, but also like it was super popular. Yeah, yeah, that's it, super easy. I just kind of gave it away just saying that. Okay, right, make it orange to white, just a nice little contrast there. And what I did also, I did a little subtext. Let's do that as well. We're just gonna make metal uh, banner tutorial <laughs> to E A N N E R. Thanks, tutorial. Okay, and we're just gonna change this to close list, make this like four, and make this like 1,500, boom. Cool, now we have a little subtext there now as well. So pretty much all I'm gonna do next is this last little part is I'm gonna basically take this little copy here, right? I'm gonna put this above this, right? So this is that copy that's right here. We're gonna take this copy now of the copy and make another copy of it. So hold Alt, drag it below it again, and move it over to the right. That way, when you go ahead and just double click on this, go to color overlay, press this, and we're gonna kind of select one of the colors that's on this nice little gradient bar that's on the sidebars. I'll see this color right here, nice little lighter tone, right? Press okay, rasterize the layer type, and that way you can take your eraser, a nice soft brush eraser, pretty good diameter. Also, if you hold alt and move left and right while right clicking and up and down is your hardness, that's how you change your diameter really quickly, right? Just erase it just like so. Very nice and simple. Kind of gives you that nice little kind of flush kind of look to it. And uh, I guess that's pretty much it. Oh, wait. Last thing would be the actual color correction. So we're going to go to shape five. We're going to click on that layer right here, right? That's all the way at the top. Shape five, hold shift and click all the way everything basically on the bottom. Okay. That'll basically allow you to go control J to duplicate everything. Control E to merge it all together. So now what's going to happen is what's in this layer right here is everything that you just did. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click convert to a uh, smart object the reason why we're doing that is because this is our cc layer and, and adjustments layer so whenever you want to do any adjustments or cc's on like an entire project this is what i like to do now i i, I like to use color filter raw to do my color corrections and we're also going to be adding a quick little noise to it so doing this now allows you to go back at any point in time as you'll see right so i'm going to go to filter camera filter raw i already have the settings already uh loaded up for me so delete five is what i called it open 
right? So you can see if I just click on this little Y here, you can cycle between before and after. You can see them at the same time. So you can see exactly what I ended up doing. So I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make this a little bit like more clear. So clarity 30, dehaze 5, vibrance 65, okay? And then blacks will go negative 10. And that's all I pretty much did. I can see like the blue hues that we had in the entire, like uh, I guess the entire like little darker colors that we had, they come out just a little bit more with the vibrance, right? We made sure the uh, vibrance as well kind of ups the orange quality. The blacks just a little bit, give it a little more contrast, kind of defer between what's going on like right here, right here, like this little shadow right here. You see how you can't really see it right here, but you can see how nice and crisp that looks. Also the clarity allows you to kind of, to, uh, I guess see this little line, that little sharpened line that we did for the stroke a little bit more. Press okay. Right, as you can see, if you ever want to go back, you can unhide it and hide it if you guys want to with the smart object being enabled. We're gonna to go to a filter, noise, add this noise here, one amount, uniform. You can see how nice that looks. Oh my God, you see how nice it looks right there? Monochromatic, press okay. If I zoom in, you can see what it does. It just adds this really, really nice metal sort of look to it. If I turn it off, turn it on. You can go smoother, like, like textured if you guys want to. I think smooth uh, looks good as well, but that's, pretty much the entire tutorial for us honestly um it looks super super crisp i know there's gonna be a, like a ton of different things that you guys will be able to do um yourself to kind of like figure out what you kind of want to go with this entire thing i kind of got lazy as you would say on the right hand side but <laughs> i'm thinking of like a lot of things i can do right now and it just there's a lot there's a lot that you guys can do and i feel like you guys will run away with this yourselves and don't forget guys to like on the video because a secret down below as always don't forget to leave a like leave a comment if anything you want to do see me do in the future like yo i want to see you do something like this just do that as well uh follow me on twitch if you guys don't know i live stream on every monday wednesday and friday on twitch twitch.tv uh twitch.tv slash sohq um check out the selfie selfie.com slash sohq for any pre uh pre-mades and packs so is freaking three dollars what is going on my my uh verbs are just going they're just english is hard okay right that's where you get this pattern pack as well okay so much love guys uh i'll talk to you guys later so, so hq out dr k keep smiling stay positive and stay freaking productive guys later much love kisses mm -hmm. okay we're leaving that was awkward okay mm -hmm.